Today we'll be talking about solving systems by substitution. This is a refresher lesson because it is technically an Algebra 1 skill, but we will be using solving systems in Algebra 2, so this is our skills day on remembering how to approach it. Now I know a lot of people learned many different methods or approaches to how to show work with solving systems in Algebra 1, but we're going to have a common approach. That common approach is going to use a three-step process to show the work. Solve, first sub, and second sub. For this first example, all of this writing is here as a reference for what each step means, but as we move on, we'll be breaking, breaking it down to the point where we understand we can just write solve and know what that means, first sub, know what that means, and second sub, and know what that means. But let's see. The first step in this process is to first solve, which means solve one of the two equations for either x or y. Now, I want to look carefully because if that's been done for me, I don't actually have any work to do. So when I look at the system that I've been given, this one is not solved for x or y, but this one is. This one is solved for y. So my job is actually done here. I can just bring down the one that's given as solved already, in this case solved for y, and I'm done. And we are going to put it in a box to make it stand out. Next is our first substitution, or what we will abbreviate as first sub. We're going to substitute the expression from step one, so here's our equation, into the other equation, so the one we did not use yet. So let's see. We used this one. We haven't used our first equation. So this equation is what we're going to write for step two, our first sub. y minus x equals negative four. Line down equal sign. Now the key to this is to realize, do we have something to plug in for x or y? Do we have something to sub in for x or y? Well, when I come over here, I see that this says y equals. So that means that I have something to substitute in for y. So where I see y, I'm going to make sure I use parentheses, and I'm going to substitute in what I know y equals. y equals negative x plus 2. So where I see y, we plug that in, and then I bring down the minus x, and then equals negative 4 is still there. We have just accomplished the first sub. What's left is to realize, what can I solve for? Well, when I look here, the only variable present is x, so I can now actually solve for x. I look and I see there's nothing to distribute, so we will just drop the parentheses. How would you solve this? Well, I look on the left and I say, what can I do? As I ask that question, I'm hoping we think of combining like terms. So let's combine like terms. And if you're ready to finish solving, pause the video here and you finish solving for x and then we'll compare what you got. When I combine like terms, I get negative 2x plus 2 equals negative 4. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. That gets me negative 2x equals negative 6. I'll divide both sides by negative 2. And I arrive at x equals 3. So I've got x. Now, my second sub, or my second substitution, we're going to substitute the x or y value we found in step two. In this case, we got x equals three, and solve for the remaining variable. Well, I know x, I'm looking for y. The reason I had you put this in a box is because I want it to stand out. I've got x, I'm looking for y. Here's an equation that says y equals. So let's use this one. So y equals negative x plus two, where I see x, I know what x is now. x is 3. So equals negative, in parentheses, let's plug in or do our second sub. We're going to plug in 3 for x plus 2. That's negative 3 plus 2. y equals, what is negative 3 plus 2? Negative 1. As an ordered pair, x comma y, that would be 3 comma, negative 1. 
In yesterday's lesson, we learned how we can check using our ordered pair and our original system. So to check, we're going to go back up to our original system and rewrite it down here. So rewriting it at the bottom, y minus x equals negative 4 is the first equation. And then y equals negative x plus 2. To check, we will use this as x, this as y, and literally plug in exactly what we see here. So y says negative 1. So negative 1 minus, we should use parentheses, okay? So negative 1 minus x is 3. E equals negative 4. Let's see. Negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4. Bring down this negative 4. Do I have a true statement? Is negative 4 equal to negative 4? Yes, that is true. But it can't just be true for 1. It's got to be true for both. So let's come over here. Y is negative 1. So I have negative 1 equals negative, and then in parentheses, we'll substitute in x, which is 3, bring down the plus 2. This becomes negative 1 equals negative 3 plus 2. Negative 1 is still here. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Check. True. So because I was able to plug in my point, and it was true for both equations in the system, I know I'm in good shape. My check is complete. If this had come out true and this had come out false, and I just double checked to make sure I didn't make any algebra mistakes, it means there's something wrong with that point. <clears throat> Example two is a you do. So this would be good if you feel confident to get started. Pause here and you try example two. If you're not so sure, let me get you started and then you'll, you'll start, you'll do the rest. Notice how no more words, just our titles. Solve, first sub, second sub. And it's kind of equally spread out. Okay? So solve. I need an equation solved for x or for y. When I come up here and I look, this one is solved for x. I can use it. So let's bring it down, and we're going to put it in a box. To accomplish the first sub, we need to use the equation we haven't used yet. So this one we just wrote here. The one we have not used yet is the second equation. So we're going to take the second equation and bring it down right here. The key, once again, is what are we going to actually plug in? I rewrote it. I haven't actually substituted anything yet. Do we have something to substitute in for x or for y? Well, when I come over here and I look, this says x equals, which means I have something I can plug in for x. So let's do exactly that. Housekeeping, little make, make sure we're neat here, move over a little bit so we have room to plug in what we need to plug in. So 2 is still there. Now instead of an x, I'm going to come over here. x equals y minus 1. So where I saw x, we're going to substitute in y, excuse me, where we saw x, we're going to substitute in y minus 1. This plus y comes down, it's still there, and equals negative 2 is still there. So we have successfully done our first sub, now we need to solve. When I look, notice the only variable here is y, so we can solve for y. Go ahead and pause the video here if you can finish solving for y. And when you're ready, check with me. So I'm going to distribute 2. That'll get me 2y. Two, 2 times the negative 1 is minus 2. And I bring down the plus y. From here, we can combine like terms. A positive 2y positive y. 
Notice how careful I am to include my sign inside my box. It really helps because now when I combine like terms, I read this 2y plus y is 3y. Bring down the minus 2. We're going to add 2 to both sides. So that's 3y equals 0. Divide both sides by 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0. First sub is done. Now for the second sub, I see that I have y. I need x. When I look over here, I have a great little equation that says x equals. So let's use that. x equals y minus 1. Line down the equal sign. Where we see y, we are going to substitute in 0. So this is 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So my ordered pair solution is negative 1, comma, 0. So notice, comparing this to example 1, I could either have an equation solved for y or an equation solved for x. What happens when we look at something like example 3? Notice that this is a we do, so we'll do this together as a set of notes. There's something a little different about this one. Notice how I haven't written the steps for you, so let's write them together. Solve first sub, second sub, and spread it out. This should be kind of in thirds. Here's the first third, here's the middle, second third of your page. For solve, I need one of these equations solved for x or y. So when I come up here and look, this one is not solved for x or y, and this one is not solved for x or y. So I have some choices to make here. Technically, you have four choices. You could, like I said, solve this for x or y. There's two choices, or solve this one for x or y. But let's be strategic. Let's see if we can figure out how to make a good choice. When you look at these four options, does one of these variables look like it's almost by itself? I'm hoping that our attention is drawn to this, to this y right here. So a strategic choice, because this y is almost by itself, is to choose this first equation, y plus 3x equals 4. And we're going to choose to solve it for y. To do that, think back to our solving skills for solving in the last unit. We're going to subtract 3x from both sides. These are not like terms. So I get y equals negative 3x plus 4. And now I have my first equation. Sorry, bear with me. Just want to slide all this over. Okay, so we have successfully solved for y. This is the only new piece. The rest of it is just the same. So think, what do we do for the first sub? We're going to go back and we're going to take the equation we didn't use yet. Which equation did we not use yet? This one or this one? The second one. We have not used the second equation. So we're going to rewrite it right here. Time to do the first sub. Do I have something to substitute in for x or for y? When I look here, this says y equals. So I have something to plug in or substitute in for y. Hmm, it's being difficult. 
Remember that housekeeping we talked about. We want this work to stay neat. So we're going to shift over so that we have space to do our substitution. So where we see y, we are going to substitute in negative 3x plus 4. This equals 2. Notice the only variable here is what? x. So we can solve for x using our algebra skills. So 5x will stay. What are we going to do with this 2? Starts with a d. We are going to distribute. So 2 times a negative 3x is a minus 6x. 2 times a positive 4 is a positive 8. What next? Well, when I look on this side of my equation, I see that I have like terms I can combine. I have a positive 5x and a negative 6x. 5x minus 6x is negative x plus 8. We'll subtract 8 from both sides. Two minus eight is negative six. Question, is this done? Is this done? Well, when I look at x, I see this negative sign in front. So I know that I'm not done because I need to actually divide by a negative one. Now x is truly solved for x equals six. I've got x, I need y. How convenient that right over here I have this great equation that says y equals. So we'll bring it over here. y equals negative 3x plus 4. Wherever we see x, we now have a value we can plug in. We can substitute in to do our second sub. So that will be negative 3, and in parentheses we'll substitute in 6 plus 4, negative 18 plus 4. So y equals negative 14. What if you're not sure? What if you're like, hmm, I'm not sure if this is right. Well, we're saying the solution, the ordered pair, is 6 comma negative 14. So if you had an extra minute, like let's say you had a quiz, and you're like, hmm, I'm not sure. Know that this is x, this is y. Let's do a check. So we're going to rewrite our original two equations, y plus 3x equals 4, and 5x plus 2y equals 2. If you're comfortable with how to check this point, pause it here, run the check, and then press play to compare. If not, let's do it together. So I'm going to draw a line down the equal sign. Where I see y, I'm plugging in negative 14 plus 3. Where I see x, I am substituting in 6 equals 4. So negative 14 plus 18 equals 4. 4 equals 4. Check. This would have failed. If something on this, if this had come out to be something other than 4, it would have failed. But so far we're in good shape. Let's go over here and check. Where I see x, we are going to substitute in 6. Where we see y, we're substituting in a negative 14. Let's take a look. 5 times 6 is 30. 2 times negative 14 is negative 28. 30 minus 28 is 2. 2 equals 2. Check. We have now made 100% sure that we are correct. Good job. If you need a moment, go ahead and press pause. When you're ready, let's continue. <clears throat> Example 4 is set as a you do. If you are ready to jump into it yourself, I'm just going to make sure that you put solve, first sub, second sub as your titles. 
probably move this one over just a little bit. Make sure they're kind of nice and equally spread out. People looking for a little help to get started. Remember, our strategic approach, our method, is to say, well, is one of these already solved for X or Y? No? No. All right, so we have some work to do for this step. Now, in both of these, X looks like a good choice. Here, X is almost by itself, and here, X is almost by itself. So it really doesn't matter which one you choose. People who have just pressed play to check your answer, if I choose one you don't choose, don't worry. We should still end up with the same answer, so don't erase anything. Okay? I think I'm going to choose the second one. So if you chose the first one, don't erase. Let's see if we get the same answer. So choosing the second one, I'm going to solve this for x. To do that, I'm going to add y to both sides. That gets me x equals 12 plus y. Put it in a box. We're going to take the equation we did not use yet, which for me is this first one, x minus 3y equals 2. Ask ourselves that question, what do we have to plug in for? Well, this says x equals, so where I see x, I have something I can plug in. Housekeeping, move over a little bit. In parentheses, let's substitute in our 12 plus y. Everything else is going to come down. Everything else stays the same. So that's why I'm saying move over a little. So that way you have room to kind of bring everything else down. I have nothing to distribute in front of those parentheses. So it's going to be 12 plus y minus 3y equals 2. And now we're back to our algebra skills to solve. I have like terms I can combine here. I have negative y, excuse me, a positive y and a negative 3y. That becomes 12 minus 2y equals 2. We'll subtract 12 from both sides. Notice how I keep my line down, I keep coming down so I can keep my equal signs all lined up. Line straight across. 12 minus 12 crosses off. I've got negative 2y left equals 2 minus 12 is negative 10. Divide both sides by negative 2. That gets me y equals 5. I've got y. I need x. We have this great little equation that says x equals 12 plus y, so let's use it. Where we see y, we're going to plug in 5. So this becomes 12 plus 5. 12 plus 5, x equals 17. So my solution is 17, comma 5. Go ahead and click pause if you need a second kind of take in the big picture of what we just accomplished. Anthony. Example 5 is a special case. We'll see what special case it is in a second. Let's run through our same steps. So my titles are solve, first sub, Second sub. When I look at my equations, they are both solved for y. See that? Take a look at this. y equals y equals. They're both solved. So it doesn't matter which one we pick. Let's say I choose the first one. So I, I chose to put the first one here. Let's, for our first sub, we're going to take the one we didn't use yet. Mm -hmm. 
So the question doesn't change. What do we have to plug in for? So, well, this says y equals. So I have something I can substitute in for y. So where we see y, we are going to write x minus 1 equals negative 5x minus 13. I can now solve this for x. I've got variables on both sides. So think back to algebra 1. When that happened, when I have variables on both sides, you mentally want to be gathering all of your x terms, all of your variables to the left, and all of your numbers to the right. So when I look at this side, for example, x can stay, 1 can't. So to move with math, a negative 1 will add 1 to both sides. So I get x equals negative 5x minus 12. This side, numbers are okay, the variables aren't. So we're going to move over this 5x. We're going to add 5x to both sides. So this will be 6x equals, this is gone here, 6x equals negative 12. So notice how we successfully gathered all of our variables to the left and numbers on the right by adding or subtracting. To wrap this up, we're going to divide both sides by 6. x equals negative 2. I know x. I need y. So for our second sub, we pull that equation y equals x minus 1. Where I see x, I substitute in negative 2 minus 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So what makes this a special case, let me write the solution. Solution, negative 2, negative 3. Go ahead and write that down. What makes this a special case is that both are solved for y. y equals y equals. This is called break even. There are some, this, this process will always work. With break-even systems where they both say y equals, some people are able to automatically jump to this step right here, where they just set, because they both say y, y equals y equals, they set x minus 1 equal to negative 5x minus 13 and then solve from here. If you see that and you're good with that, I'm fine with you doing that. If what I just said is like, wait, what did you just say, Miss A? No worries. Stick with what I showed you. Solve, first sub, second sub. And if you have a question, pause right here and jot your question down, and we'll, we'll go over it in the debrief at the start of tomorrow's class. Example six. Another special case. Let's see how this ends up being a special case. Our steps don't change. Solve first sub, second sub. When I look, this one is not solved for x or y. This one is not solved for x or y. Hmm. Well, let's make a choice. You really have four choices. When you're looking at which choice to make, because again, we still want to be strategic. If I choose to solve this for x, I'm going to have to divide by a negative 6 at some, at some point. If I choose to solve this one for x, I'm going to have to divide by a negative 9. I really don't want to do that at all. I don't think you do either. If I solve this one for y, I have to divide by 2. That's a lot nicer. Or if I choose to work with this one, I'll have to divide by a positive 3. Also not as bad. So I would say equally good choices would be to either solve this one for y or this one for y. Go ahead and pause. Make your choice. 
My choice might be different, but that's okay. We will get the same answer. I think I'm going to choose to work with this second equation. My choice is to work with negative 9x plus 3y equals 12, and I'm going to solve it for y. To do that, I will add 9x to both sides. That gets me 3y equals 9x plus 12. And I will wrap this up by dividing each term by 3. So I get as an answer y equals 3x plus 4. First sub, we're going to go back and take the equation we didn't use yet. For me, the equation I didn't use yet is the first one. So negative 6x plus 2y equals 4. Housekeeping, move over a little bit, start writing over here so you have space. So negative 6x plus 2. Remember, this says y equals. So I have something I can plug in for y. So using parentheses, I'm going to do just that, plus 2 times 3x plus 4, and then the equals 4 is still here. We are now going to solve this for x. So negative 6x will say, what do we need to do with the 2? We are going to distribute. So a positive 2 times 3x is a positive 6x. Positive 2 times 4 is a positive 8 equals 4. Combining like terms, uh-oh, what happens? Negative 6x plus 6x, that's 0. Those cross each other off. Those cancel each other out. Equals 0x, or just 0. So now I have 8 equals 4. Can anyone think back to last year? When you got a false statement, what did that mean? False statement. Think, think, think. False statement, these are parallel lines. Will parallel lines ever intersect? No. No solution. So if we get a false statement, it means that these lines, if I were to graph these, they will never intersect. So this, is, this special case is parallel lines. No solution. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our last example. It's our, our last special case. So we have two so far. We have break even, and then we have what, ha what we're going to call parallel lines, no solution, special case. One more special case. Let's get our steps. I don't even look at the system yet. I always get my steps down first. Solve, first sub, second sub. Okay, now that we have our framework, let's go look. Can we make a strategic good choice? Because when I look, not solved for x or y, not solved for x or y. So now let's take, take a look and see. Mm, nah, no thanks, mm, no, mm, still no. Hey, look at this. This y is almost by itself. Notice how the coefficient is 1. So let's choose to solve this first equation for y. So let's bring it down. Negative 4x plus y equals negative 8. Line down the equal sign. To solve for y, we're going to add 4x to both sides. So that gets me y equals 4x minus 8. First, um, excuse me, solve is complete, my solving step. I now have an equation 
This one is solved for y. First sub, go take the equation you didn't use yet. For me, it's the second one, so negative 12x plus 3y equals negative 24. Line down my equal sign. I have something to substitute in for y over here. Housekeeping, move over. Start writing over here so that you have space to do your substitution. So the negative 12x comes down, the plus 3 is still here. Plus 3y becomes plus 3 times 4x minus 8 equals negative 24. Let's solve for x. So we've got negative 12x. We're going to distribute the 3. 3 times 4x is plus 12x. 3 times negative 8 minus 24 equals negative 24. I look on the left side, I have like terms here, negative 12x plus 12x. What happens? What is negative 12x plus 12x? Zero. These cross each other out. What's left? On the left side, I have negative 24. On the right side, I have negative 24. Ooh. So ask yourself, is negative 24 equal to negative 24? Yes. So up there, we wrote false statement. Here, we're going to write true statement. If it's true, what does that mean? Try to think back to last year. What's that called? If it's true, it means that one line is graphed right on top of the other. In other words, they are the same line. Same line. Which means they intersect everywhere. Every single point on the line works. Well, lines go forever and ever in both directions. So this is infinitely, infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many. So this one, example six, there was no solution. They, oops, they didn't intersect anywhere. No solution. Here, these lines intersect everywhere, meaning every single point is the solution. We will call that um, same line. which means infinitely many solutions. That wraps up our notes for solving by substitution. Looking forward to working on the practice with you tomorrow. Go ahead and make sure that you're jotting down any questions in the margin. If there's any example you would like to see again, feel free to rewind the video, watch it one more time. Have a great day, everybody.